I mean, I understand that Sadie, there's human nature with her. And it's that thing that you were saying before where it's like thinking one thing and like knowing what you're, ha- what you're supposed to do and then the behavior that you actually do. And sometimes it takes a little learn the lesson, takes it longer for others. And I think, you know, Sadie was harboring resentment from Sam and her first fight when, when they were children. You know, they never actually right. ever talked about it or talked through it. It was just like, all right, we'll make a game and that will be our band-aid <laughs> or healing mechanism. Right, there were some things they maybe should have addressed head on, but neither of them are people that address things head on. You know, they can't they can't be other than, than who they are, you know, and it's not like... And it just misses every time. Just, they think they're okay. I think both of them, and I think both of them want the other to think that they are okay. And so they don't necessarily say the things and I think a lot of us don't say the things like the they're hard it's I think it's hard to to do a big thing like make a game and so you kind of again they are completely intimate as long as they are talking about their work and they just aren't particularly intimate in any of the other ways you know I do because there was a beautiful moment where Sam's like I recognize the back of Sadie's hand like I know her (laughs) so well that I, right. I can recognize her hands. And then it's like, oh, wait a second. I actually don't know huge things. And when like say, uh, when they finally rekindle at the end and he has this thing go, do you know why we moved to LA in the first place? We saw a woman jump off a building. Trigger warning for everyone with that one. <laughs> you, but, you know, like have, uh, he just witnessed this huge thing and he had nightmares for a decade. And she's like, I didn't know that. I right. thought I like knew everything. Like if you think you can know everything about someone and then there's still all these secret rooms to the house that is your friend. But I really loved the the normalcy, I guess, of I won't have the conversation with you, so I'll just build my own narrative. Well, you know, and early in the book, both something that Sam and Sadie appreciate with each other when they are children is that Sadie doesn't make him tell her all his sad stories, that she allows him like a a distance. You know, she doesn't make him say like, I was in a car accident, my mother died, you know? (laughs) right? This is the pain I am in. Like in a sense, their relationship in the games they play provide like a respite from just like the rest of his life. Part of the terms of their relationship is that there are painful things that they don't discuss. And so it starts from childhood and they continue on with with that respectful distance, which becomes frankly just intolerable, you know, at a certain point for both of them. When the terrible thing happens, they have no language with which to be comforting to each other, you know, really. Yeah, it's it's Sadie really throwing herself into the grief and then Sam kind of being like, it's not just happening to you, but then Sadie almost hearing that as like an insult where it's just right. like, why don't you just let me feel sad? Yeah. And I think he's being like profoundly loving to her during that section. Like I think he, you know, by running their company, going to work, doing those things, like being an adult, being Mark, you know, basically, you know, I think it's, it's that's the only way Sam really knows how to love somebody is through action and through like, I will you know, I'll make you this game, I'll do this thing, I can, you know, through gesture, when sometimes, like, just (laughs) words would be simpler to get that effect. But he's, yeah, you're right, he shows up, and he continues to show up, and even when she pushes him away, isolates, you know, doesn't want anything to do with him, he'll find a new way to sort of be there for her, which seems to piss her off. And I don't even think she's mad at him, really. I think, like, it's more, she's just incredibly sad. It's easier to not be together at that point, and to kind of, like, it's easy to you be know, mad at just, Sam, who you've it had is, such it a, is. Yeah. than to like just want to die, you know, yeah. Or, yeah. or what have you. Like, yeah, so that's another thing. Like, uh, you know, I've read, I've seen people and spoken to people who are like, I find Sadie really unsympathetic during that section. And I and I think to myself, geez, she's pregnant. Her, yeah. you know, her lover and business partner has just died. You know, I think she's going through a pretty good depression. And, you know, obviously probably also, you know, she's postpartum. I'm like, maybe, you know, things are hard for Sadie. Like, she maybe cut her a little lows. slack. Yeah. She like, does. Yeah. Like, it's, it's an overwhelmingly, because we're mainly in Sam's point of view and not Sadie's through that section of time, you know and so I felt like great sadness for her then you know and I thought it was so relatable where he's like please come back to work and she's like I can't I just can't right she just can't can't like she doesn't want to ever go to that office again why would she right (laughs) and it makes sense but Um, yeah the I I'm very guilty of the it's easier to be mad at you than to be sad with me Yeah, I think that's I think that's a lot of us, you know, really, I think. And, you know, until you recognize it in yourself, you just keep doing it. And we see that here. And of course, when you're reading it, you see the pattern. But when you're in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so well, funny. you know, it's funny. At the end of the book, they're only 35 or something. So and I'm like, you know, seven. they have it. Yeah, they haven't figured all of their things out, you know. They, yeah, right. I think they're like 37. Right. And so like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah they have it. Hit really close right. To <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and so, you know, I'm 45 and I feel like I wasn't really like a, a full person until like really like maybe five, six years ago. You know, like I think I really had not figured myself out as a writer, hadn't figured myself out as a human, you know, and I felt very little judgment toward Sam and Sadie because I know what it is to be young, like, and just like burning with ambition and not sure how to do things and, you know, screwing up with everyone all the time, you know. <laughs> So, I do. But with regard to the pioneer section, it you know, I think there are some people who just like will hit it and they'll think this is in a video game. That's what she said. It's a video game. But for me, the way I thought about it when I was writing it was I wanted to feel like a sweeping love story set in the Old West. So if you look at the language in it, the actual language is all very old fashioned, like old fashioned dialogue tags, and just the kind of like, you know, I wanted it to feel like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, or I wanted it to feel like Willis Mather's Oh Pioneers, <laughs> you know. Oh and so to me, what was fun was the juxtaposition between the idea idea that you were in, you know, a game like Stardew Valley, you know, mixed with, you know, the feel of like a period romance, a, a sweeping period romance, you know, on some level, it's the most romantic section of the book, because it's the only real place Sam and Sadie can have a romance, you know, it's in a virtual space on a, a real one, you know, and it's still in a way platonic, like they're yeah, it's yeah. platonic, you like know? It's, a it's a dedication. And in fact, a lot of the audience was saying that quote of it's more than romantic, it's better than romance its friendship and how important that single line was to define and break the stigma that you're only whole if it's romantic or if you're with a partner or that sort of physical slash romantic intimacy whereas the power of the power of friendship it sounds like it right. but like having that depth and trust and you know rawness and exposure in that friendship and we see the highs and lows that Sadie and Sam go through with Sadie's resentment and Sam's internalization and never sort of sharing his pain and then yet there's blips of sort of like forgiveness and to acknowledge that they've gone through so much and that they can continue this in a particular way oh where am I going with this addressing and spotlighting how important friendship is and it was well it's funny I think people oppose like uh, platonic and romantic but I do think Sam and Sadie's relationship is romantic just not sexual you know and so I think they have their romance is a romance of work you know what I mean and they do actually even kind of have uh, you know I think it is a marriage it's just not in the way we think of a marriage they have a you know whatever work life or whatever you want to call it they have a marriage and it really and, and it does have children but it's just they're these games, the games you know yeah. So I think there are all kinds of relationships that people have that, you know, are not the ones people used to have, you know, so for me, I think I started to want to write about different kinds of love, maybe about five years ago. I mean, I was always writing about different kinds of love and friendship. But about five years ago, I was out promoting a different book. And you know, when you promote a book, they ask you, would you please like write personal essays? And I will say now that I hate writing personal essays, would rather never do it. I'm like, just enjoy the book. You don't need to know anything about me. The less you know about me, probably the better. But so I wrote a personal essay. I wrote this like article for Modern Love, which they titled The Secret to Marriage is Never Getting Married. It was about the fact that my partner and I had been together like 25 years at that point and had never married and all the art we made together and, and the life we had together and all that kind of stuff. And of course, because it was called The Secret to Marriage is Never Getting Married, like the internet instantly just hated me, you know? Oh. So, because oh. I claim to have the secret, but I hadn't claimed to have the secret to anything. I have no, I have no secrets. I have no secrets at all that I can tell anyone. You have your experience, but, you know, yeah. Right. The main, like, you know, comment was something like Gabrielle Zevin can't know anything about marriage because she has never had children. So I can't know anything about love or marriage because I haven't had children. But That's you know, the why fact we have is, dogs. <laughs> right. But the fact is, you know, I will probably not have a life that has children in it, which I knew even then. So when you say that to somebody, you're kind of saying that their life is not real and the yeah, choices they've they made are worse. not real. And, uh, and that kind of thing, values. my takeaway was that you have to kind of appreciate whatever love should show up for you in your life, wherever that's going to be and fully embrace it because not all of us are going to have the exact same stories that say a prior generation had or that most of our novels lead us to believe we should have. So that's how I think I got started on writing, wanting to write a relationship that was, you know, really it is a love story. It's not the one that's going to be productive and lead to like marriage and children and buying a car together or whatever it is you know yeah but it's going to be one of the most important relationships that they've ever had in their life there's not going to be anybody more important to sam or sadie ever than yeah. each other you know yeah. there's just it's just probably not going to happen 